Hi, welcome to another Cold Fusion video. Since the dawn of civilization, mankind has always looked up at the heavens and wondered what lay beyond our planet. While most people gazed in wonder, only a select few have ever visited space. The tale of the first man to do so is a story of triumph, fame, a sad demise, and some very peculiar events. To understand what happened, let me tell you a story. You are watching Cold Fusion TV. On October 4th, 1957, humans would send an object into space for the first time in history. The Soviet satellite Sputnik 1 became the first artificial object to be put in orbit. Sputnik was a brief mission, sending out a radio signal for only 22 days before burning up in the atmosphere in early 1958. It would make a pass around the Earth once every 96 minutes, and the world was stunned by the event. The launch of Sputnik was a much more significant event than most people today realize. It prompted the foundation of NASA and DARPA by the Americans, marking the beginning of the space race. But Sputnik would also result in the Americans forming ARPANET, the start of our current internet. The world was absolutely shocked when the Russians sent Sputnik into space, but the USSR wasn't finished. On April 12, 1961, aboard the spacecraft Vostok 1, 27-year-old cosmonaut Yuri Gagarin became the first human to travel into space. Vostok 1 orbited the planet for just 89 minutes at a maximum altitude of 320 kilometers. It was basically a cannonball large enough for one person. It was guided entirely by an automatic control system. Yuri Gagarin wasn't very talkative during the ordeal. Some of his only words were, quote, flight is proceeding normally, I am well. He said these words while traveling at 29,000 kilometers an hour or eight kilometers per second. Upon his return, Gagarin became an instant worldwide celebrity. In Russia, he ascended to legendary status. Monuments were raised, and street names were changed throughout the Soviet Union in his honor. At this time, the United States weren't just being beaten to the punch, they were being punched square in the face. To add insult to injury, in August of 1962, the Americans were beaten again. It was another cosmonaut in the spacecraft Vostok 2 this time orbiting 17 revolutions around the Earth and spending more than 25 hours in space. It wasn't until February of 1962 when astronaut John Glenn made three orbits around the Earth in Friendship 7. Understanding that he needed to boost his country's confidence, President Kennedy declared that the US would reach the moon by the end of the decade. We choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other things not because they are easy, but because they are hard. Because that goal will serve to organize and measure the best of our energies and skills. Because that challenge is one that we're willing to accept, one we are unwilling to postpone, and one we intend to win. But for now, the Russians were in charge. Though later, our protagonist, Yuri Gagarin, would find himself in a lot of trouble. On March 27, 1968, seven years after his trip to space, Yuri Gagarin got up early in the morning and headed to Chekhalovsky Airport. His purpose was to retrain as a fight pilot after his time as a cosmonaut. The plan was for Gagarin to run a few test missions in his Russian MiG-15, but of course, things wouldn't go according to plan. The weather was poor at the airport, with the wind and rain making their presence known. When Gagarin forgot his ID that morning, he told those around him that this was a bad omen. Despite the weather and the bad juju, Gagarin took off without incident. After he'd completed his exercises, he radioed back to base saying that he would return shortly. This would be the last time that anyone would hear from him. A couple of hours later, a flight rescue team took off on a search mission. As they were searching, they could see the plane's burning wreckage from the air. The hope was that the former cosmonaut may have ejected before impact. Unfortunately, 
These hopes were dashed when Gagarin's body was found the next day. An extensive investigation by the USSR proved to be inconclusive. One prevalent theory was that Gagarin swerved to avoid an object, a bird or a weather balloon, and lost control of the aircraft. Naturally, being the Soviet Union, very little information was released to the public and conspiracy theories started to grow. Some say Gagarin was drunk and decided to take a joy flight. It's not totally unfeasible as Yuri had a history with the bottle. The young cosmonaut had taken his meteoric rise to international fame fairly hard. As a former village boy, he wasn't prepared to be an icon of inspiration. He would receive thousands of letters from citizens across the USSR telling of disturbing stories and asking for help. It was then that he began to see the dark underbelly of the Soviet Union. As time went on, this took a toll on the young cosmonaut. He began to slip into alcoholism and other risky behaviour. Other theories suggest that he was a secret agent from the CIA and was poisoned. There was another rumour that stated that he actually survived the plane crash and had gone into hiding. Still, others said that he was trying to avoid a UFO when he crashed. So what really happened? Will we ever know? Well, you're in luck because in 2013, the cause of the crash was finally determined. As it turns out, another much larger plane, a Sukhoi Su-15, came into the airspace of Gagarin's MiG-15, causing him to take evasive action and crash. In the end, it was a run-of-the-mill accident ending in tragedy. The Soviet authorities and air traffic control were so embarrassed about their incompetence that they didn't release the true cause of the accident. That is uh, that the altimeter at the control tower was not functioning properly and there was no way of avoiding that collision. There the pilot made a very dangerous maneuver in the clouds only 15 meters away from Gagarin's plane and turned it over and then sent it into a tailspin. Then at a speed of around 750 kilometers an hour, Yuri Gagarin's jet fighter spiraled into the ground. This is not yet another version of Gagarin's death, but a true reason why we lost him when he was only 34 years old. Before we finish this episode, the question has to be asked, why were the Russians so much better than the Americans at space travel during the 1960s? Well, it's largely due to the brilliance of just one man who has been forgotten by history. The Soviet's conquest of space was viewed as evidence for the supremacy of communism over capitalism. However, only insiders who worked on Sputnik and the Vostok programs knew that this success was due to one man, Sergei Pavlovich Korolev. The chief designer of these programs, Korolev, was unknown in the West and even to the Russian public until after his death. Korolev helped launch the first Soviet liquid-fueled rocket in 1933. Five years later, during one of Joseph Stalin's paranoid purges, Korolev and his colleagues were put on trial. Convicted of treason and sabotage, Korolev was sentenced to 10 years in a labor camp. As World War II intensified, the Soviet leaders started to realize that German rocket technology was a real threat. Knowing of Korolev's talent, the government put him to work from prison. In 1945, when the war was over, Korolev was sent to Germany to learn about Nazi rocketry. His mission was to study the V-2 rocket. It was basically an early form of homing missile that heavily damaged the British during the war. The Americans were also interested in this technology. They captured the V-2 rocket's designer and eventually made him head of the US space program. The Soviets went further and managed to get their hands on the rockets, blueprints, and a few German V-2 technicians. By 1954, Korolev had built a rocket which could carry a five-ton nuclear warhead. In 1957, the Russians launched the first intercontinental ballistic missile. But Korolev had his eyes set on bigger things, which brings us back to the launch of Sputnik 1. It was the first Soviet victory in the space race, but amazingly, Korolev was still in prison when he worked on the project. He would finally be released a short time later, and with Korolev at the helm, 
the Soviet space program would be unmatched in the early 1960s. The Soviet list of firsts into space include the first animal in orbit, first large scientific satellite, first man, first woman, first three men, first spacewalk, first spacecraft to impact the moon, first spacecraft to orbit the moon, first spacecraft to impact Venus, and first spacecraft to soft land on the moon. The Americans were simply no match while Korolev was in charge. Despite all his success, Sergei Pavlovich Korolev was only known by the mysterious title of Chief Designer. Korolev would die in 1966 from health complications during his mistreatment in the labor camp. Upon his death, his identity was finally revealed to the world, and he was awarded a burial in the Kremlin wall as a hero of the Soviet Union. As good as this was, I'm sure he would have appreciated this honor a little more when he was still alive. Both Yuri Gagarin and Korolev both advanced humanity's ventures into space, and I'm sure very few people have heard of both of their names. And that's what this video is for, to bring to light history that's been forgotten. The trend of going to space is about to heat up again in the 2020s, as private companies from Richard Branson, Elon Musk, and Jeff Bezos take to the heavens once again. We'll see all of this in the next episode, which will be the week after next. While that episode is being made, Next week, I'll be releasing some music which a lot of you have been asking for, so stay tuned for all of that in the coming weeks. And if you do want to see anything on science, technology, business, and history, definitely subscribe so you don't miss upcoming videos. All right, so this has been Dagogo, and you've been watching Cold Fusion, and I'll catch you again soon for the next video. Cheers, guys. Have a good one.